Well, my experience of being uh, getting to be a green uh, councillor was I I stood twice as uh, as as a green, and then my third time as independent, um, and uh, I just I I I've been a parish councillor for years. And I stood on that. I was a very well known locally, and I, I got quite a lot of votes on that because I'm also connected with lots of other organisations and events locally. And I think, you know, getting, you know, if one can get um, sort of dig into uh, um, other, 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 other things, it, it does help because you become more known. And I think, you know, you know, we who are already elected need to keep promoting our names as Joe and I are doing. You know, we keep putting our names in parish magazines in the Henny Standard. We feature every week, don't we, Joe? <laughs> uh, one way or another, Joe's a uh, uh, you know, swimming champion. And it just helps um, to get familiar names that are familiar and, 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 and coming across. Um, because the Conservatives have a strong brand awareness. And if you don't know, if you're voting for the first time, you tick, you know, in this area, if you read the Daily Mail, the Daily Telegraph, you tick the Conservative box. Um, because you don't know anything, you don't know any better, um, and so we just keep plugging away at. Uh, and it doesn't always have to be lovely green things; it can just be anything. <laughs> but um, you know, we know we're green. Um, you know, green all, all the way through. But uh, people just need to uh, see our names and then vote for us out out the names because we're good. I, I think I think there's also something about actually. I think I'm helped enormously by having Greens and Lib Dems in power in South Oxfordshire, because it shows that Greens can, Greens can behave as intelligent, sensible people and do, do smart things. And actually the Greens are really good. Um, and it stops the, oh, these people will stop you driving your car at all and close all your roads and do slightly crazy things um, because they don't and they haven't. And in fact, they've, they've been very responsible and done the right thing. And I think that helps. The other thing I, I think, certainly where there's a lot of development, I think the Tor I, I actually think the core Tory vote is very demoralised. I spoke to a lot of Tories who were bewildered by the fact that their party was dumping very large numbers of houses on the on the countryside and and horrified by the idea that we we haven't really seen the start of it yet. Um, and, and the other thing is, certainly in our area, the people who are moving into the new houses are young, well-educated, and don't vote Tory. So oddly, oddly, I think the Conservatives may have locked themselves out of power for a long time by the very thing that we opposed, which is all this house building, because it brings in people. I went down a whole, I went around a whole estate and people get saying, yeah, I voted for you already. Um, and it was a, it is a weird experience because you don't expect that in a challenger party. Yes, we're, we, we are becoming hopefully the, the, the party that is not the challenger party just the the good the good alternative um and not we're not sort of uh, sandal wearing excuse me um hippies um who do extinction rebellion and all that sort of thing we're just uh, we're just sensible grown-up people taking a the big view of the future and yeah. um you know certainly in, in my role in sadc i come up i try and come up with a the ideas that um, make going to make our district a better place, whether it's my bugbear of putting pylon power lines underground, which everybody votes for, supporting pubs, which everybody votes for, or my latest one, which is the uh, the DDS, <laughs> which uh, Joe enjoys, which is the uh, the the uh, <coughs> I'd be modest to say the Dragonetti did cot Serengeti. It's a 500, a 500 acres of uh, open space around Didcot that's just there for people to walk, um, you know, just un, un, you know, for the for the tenth of a cost of a, a swimming, you know, a modern swimming pool, you get 500 acres of open space, which in 40 years time will be the biggest asset that Didcot has. And do you yeah. know, great are, are you going to rename yourself Peter Serengeti? No, oh, it's going to be the Dragonetti Serengeti with rewilding and humans can wander free. Uh, and the great thing about this is that Peter came up with this idea and then we said, well, go and mention it to the cabinet member and go and mention it. So now it's actually happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's now in train because Peter has said, 
and he's done the costings and he's crunched the numbers. And some one of the officers was like, God, that's good value for money. You can buy a whole lot of low value agricultural land from farmers and then you can rewild it and put some dirt bike tracks into it and get, make it open space for, you know, the people of Didcot who are, you know, facing huge amounts of development. People love it. It's cheap. Peter's costed it. It's genius. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's called Greenbelt. Uh, no, no, it's not. It's not Greenbelt. No, but I mean, it's the concept, isn't it? Well, it's 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 real Greenbelt. Yeah. There's real green land for people, not yeah. um, to, for people to use and enjoy. It's park. Massive. Uh, park. Really thinking the... But it, it's a sort of thing that you can attract all sorts of people who wouldn't vote for us. To, to come on board with. Um, and it's our idea. So, you know, it's the Greens got all the good ideas. It's your idea, Peter, and it's Jim. I know, I'm, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's generated through a, symbi a symbiotic relationship with all of you. Uh, so to wrap up, Peter, what were your best and worst experiences as a councillor? Um, my best was uh, when I was elected, meeting all the other green councillors and uh, finding out how lovely they all were. Um, you know, instead of being a lone voice um, with crazy ideas of getting knocked down all the time, you know, there, there we are, we're all, all in, in a great thing. Um, my worst experience, uh, I, I'm pleased to say, I don't think I've had one yet. Oh, yes, I have. Being, uh, oh no, it's actually quite enjoyable being attacked by um, Ken Arlott, the mayor of Henley, uh, because I don't support. I, I sometimes approve, recommend planning, approve planning applications that he objected to. Um, but there you are. Well, that's life, isn't it? You have to be, uh, you have to take the um, soft decisions sometimes because uh, these yeah. things are inevitable. Yeah. Okay, and a final question for any of the councillors. What could members and volunteers do to help you? I'm looking forward to the creation of this councillor support group because when things like the thousand page Oxfordshire 2050 consultation document come out, you think, how on earth? It's not possible for us, to, each one of us, to find the time to read that. I can't wait for some really clever, dedicated Greens to get their teeth into that sort of thing. Reviewing that kind of stuff and greening it takes a lot of time. And it's it's great to have the support, external support, to have an extra pair, set of eyes or several sets of eyes to have a look at it. Those sorts of big things I think we could do with help with. Yeah. Also good to know what other Greens are doing in other councils so that for example, when we come up with motions, usually it's because we've seen something on Twitter or some yeah. other idea, but you know, Peter's motions are all his own ideas. Um, it's great to have some sense of best practice and what other councils, other green councils are doing so that we can steal some of their ideas and hopefully they can borrow some of ours as well. There, there is of course a whole collection of motions by the Association of Green Councillors.